I think, Christine, with us now, in the 1970s, fuel subsidy was implemented to keep fuel prices low. But it had grown to become a financial burden, costing the government about $10 billion um, dollars last year. The term subsidy gained national attention in 2012 when former President Goodluck Jonathan proposed its removal. Uh, this led to an increase in fuel price from 65 Naira, which is about um, uh, 14 cents, to 140 Naira per liter, which is about you know, 30, 30 cents, you know, less than a dollar per liter, which sparked two weeks of protests coined um, as Occupy Nigeria. As a result, Jonathan reversed his decision to remove the subsidy. Tinubu, who has embarked on some of Nigeria's biggest reforms in decades to tackle issues including its high debt burden, ended the subsidy on May 29 during his inaugural speech. Nigeria imports almost all its refined fuel due to inadequate refining capacity and neglect of existing refineries as, and, and as the largest producer of crude oil in Africa, this poses a huge problem. So tonight, we're asking, how is Nigeria today with regards to the implementation, or rather the increment of this fuel price? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. You can also tweet at us at Weishu Africa one with the hashtag Weishu. You know, I remember 2012 very clearly, but let me come to you, Uti, because your words in the news was centered around the conversation for today. Do you want to quickly yeah. take that? Well, it's a short story. The headline simply says, If man identifies reasons for new hike in fuel price to, to, to 616 naira, um, 617 naira per litre. The national president of um, IPMAN, which is the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Chidudu Okorunkwo, explained the sudden hike in pump price of petrol products in Nigeria, blaming it on the rising cost of the dollar. Of course, we know that um, the finished product is, of course, imported using dollars, and as the price of that increases, given that the... Um, the FX market has been harmonized, so we don't have the separate rates at the INE window, you know, and the various other other um, options. It's been harmonized, so as the rate goes up, the market is determining the price of dollar. The market is determining the price of fuel. The fuel is de dependent on the price cost of dollar, and hence the vicious cycle continues. So when we took the hit of 400 and something naira to 500 and something naira. We thought perhaps we would breathe a little bit, but now it is 617. And the most depressing part, depressing part for me is that there is no end in sight because, of course, as the Naira continues to weaken against the dollar, so all of these dollar-dependent purchases will also get more expensive. So in line with the reality today, yes, the president in his short time in office has made a lot of reforms and I'm still not hearing solutions. I'm still not hearing how we're going to stabilize the rates, the free fall of the Naira against the dollar now that the market is setting the rates. Um, I'm not hearing solutions to the plight of you and I. I mean, when the outgoing president <laughs> said he wanted to borrow from World Bank to give money, everybody shouted. And then two days ago or so, I saw 8,000 Naira was being banned. The exact same thing. And I'm like, do we not have any new ideas? Do we not have solutions? Do we not have ways in which we can invest today to stimulate the economy? Can we not invest in, in electricity, in infrastructure that will allow the MSME sector's businesses to drive the economy to somehow send money? Because at this point, it, I mean, every time I think about it, it's just depressing. Like, one minute you are, you're just a, about trying to even find your level or some sort of equilibrium. And then this whole thing just sort of messes you up. Like, someone literally just takes the carpet and just yanks it right out from under you. And all of that being said, Ua, your chest is pain, you're hurt, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all looking for air to breathe. We are not even at, some people can't eat, some people can't, like, Literally, somebody yesterday was telling me I couldn't leave her house because she didn't have petrol. She couldn't afford to buy petrol. So these are dire times. And I literally, everywhere right now is, are there answers? Are there solutions? Are there creative solutions that will solve this problem? So I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. When um, the business mogul, Dangote, mentioned, you know, 
booming economy to be able to create, you know, jobs and all of that. We know all of these things, right? How? No, as in, I'm saying that these things look really nice on paper. But you know already that this country is, we are not, like literally everything that we consume, right? A huge percentage of that is being imported, is dependent on dollar. That is why the Volcanizer today, just for fixing my tire, told me that he wanted to collect 2000 I said, what happened? He said, my dollar and uh, what did he say? That something about fuel price. I said, how does that one consign this tire that I want to fix? Ah, so he was going to charge true. me 2000 naira. I said, oh, God, it's 1000 naira I'm going to give you. You either collect it or you don't collect it. I said, okay, you will collect the money. Now, this thing is not just stopping there. There is so much that has been impacted with this price increment. What I, I asked this question the first time they increased this fuel price. And I'll still bring it back again. It is NNPC that is setting a benchmark for this pricing, right? We already know how Nigerian structure is, that I will buy something 10 Naira, and I'll come and say it is 100 Naira that I want to sell it. Who is regulating some of these cost uh, prices, right? How do we even check that, okay, you know what, this is the exact landing cost? And if you are a government, if you are serious about this thing, shouldn't, shouldn't we be taking off some of these, uh, what's it called, those extra taxes, that would increase the prices of these commodities when you know clearly you can look away from that you understand you can look away from the taxes or whatever that you generate from this kind of commodities because you know this commodity is a direct impact on the average person on the street but no we will still impact it at a high we will import it at a high cost not only import it at a high cost NPC decides to say you know what this is the price they want to sell every other person will have to fall fall in line what if there's somebody today that can bring in this fuel at a cheaper price that can be sold at a cheaper price? Right? We're not even exploring those options. I promised myself I was going to be very quiet today, but I'm tired. Because this is really, really ridiculous. Where do we end this matter? Today, dollar is at 800 and, and what's it called? 35. Some people are buying dollar. P parents are stranded. They cannot, they cannot pay school fees for their children. You already destroyed the healthcare sex system. You destroyed the educational system. A lot of parents are paying through their nose to be able to take their children to school. So, Easy, let me hear your thoughts. That's the vicious cycle for me right now. Because the price is in free fall, right? Everybody that has Naira right now is going after dollar. And if the market is setting the prices and it's supply and demand, the price will keep going it up. It will keep yeah. going up. So they can't even, they can't even stop it. Mm. You yeah. see, I'm not happy. You I see, don't are you... know if I should smile or I should <laughs> cry. Because I want to open the book of Lamentations. You know what he said it earlier today? So let's open to the book of Lamentations 101. It is not interesting what has been happening with, when I heard that they'd increased fuel, all I could think of was already parents, as a teacher and as an educator, what came to my head was, oh, already parents are already going through a lot because they are the end game at the end of the day. We have the consumers who will also go through the same thing. The parents are, they've already increased school fees. Currently, Ekoma is on strike, or the, the workers are currently on strike because the students actually uh, went out and complained to, or had a, 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 a little protest complaining that they've increased their school fees. So with this, at, at that time, it was like uh, 500 and something. Now it's 617. That means they'll come out again. They're, I am really... Um, I, 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 psychologically, I am gone because I don't know if Nigerians are feeling the same pain I'm feeling, but psychologically, I am trying to detach myself from the problems that we are facing in Nigeria and trying to seek a personal solution to what I'm going through as an average Nigerian. And I think that's what every other Nigerian is trying to do. How do we raise our head above the waters and actually breathe a little? Because the, it just keeps coming in ripple effect. Let's not talk about the fact that transportation is going to be on the increase. Let's not talk about the fact that 
um, the, food, the food we buy in the market will be on the increase. Everything is going to skyrocket. Again, purchasing power is is so low. Nobody has money. Everybody's complaining. Just like Uti said, you know, it's we just need a breather. We need a solution to this problem. And when I also looked at the demographics from uh, from other countries that are actually um, selling fuel. I realized that Nigeria as an OPEC country, we are supposed to be on the lower end. We shouldn't spend so much money. But we have individuals or we have countries like Venezuela, we have countries like UAE, we have countries like Tunisia, Indonesia. All these countries have pecked their uh, um, petrol on um, 600 and something Naira in according to Nigerian currency. So it is sad that we are where we are today. What we just really need is a solution and a cushion effect from this debacle that we are all going through in Nigeria. Hey, is he still speak English? <laughs> Sorry. Hey. By the way, you look good today. Let me use it to calm myself. I like your you're looking very pink. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, let me come to you. <laughs> so for I'm me, trying to keep myself sane. Like I said, it's Nigeria is happening to everybody. Everybody is psych. I don't know psychologically. I can't even think. You're trying to get out of it. Something else comes up. It's it's just sad. It's so sad. Let me hear your thoughts, Jennifer. You know, at this point, right? I think I'm like a zombie. Right, because when when things like this come up, um, I want to be scared. I want to be angry. I want to be upset. You I, can't like, do anything. I don't feel anything. You right, you zoned out. <laughs> I'm just like, what can I do? Right, it just shows that I'm going to be spending a lot more. And the truth about the government is, if they keep using the same strategy. We keep getting the same results and they keep recycling the same strategies, the same plans that the government of old have been using. And to me, it just baffles me, right? You can see that it never worked in the past, right? So why are you still implementing the same thing? And the world is changing, right? We're, we're trying to make progress, but you keep taking us back. We're not even just standing in one place. You're taking us back. The standard of living is so high right now that it is affecting every level of income earners, right? Even people who feel like, oh, you're earning so much. The truth is that the amount you're going to be churning out monthly is going to be way higher than what you were churning out a hmm. few months ago. Not stock of the low income earners. People cannot afford to pay for transportation, right? People are struggling to pay for transportation. For those who are using boats and Ubers, they've become extremely expensive. I know how much I spend on that right now Everybody compared to what I was spending. Now. Yeah, <laughs> even that, right, is still expensive, mm. right? And that's the honest truth. One of the reasons why people left the yellow cabs to Ubers, aside uh, maybe security or safety, is also the amount, right? It felt like, okay, it was a bit cheaper. It was budget. stabilized. But right now, it's, it's way more than we're paying then. Hmm. And it's crazy because I, I, I don't know. Food is going to be very expensive. Now, if you're thinking of buying groceries for your family, you should know, you should fact, just double what you spent last month or two months ago. Just double that. And that's what you're going to you spend know, when and, you go to the and market. And this is where I say government is funny. So when someone sent me that message last night to say, oh, prepare for fuel price increment and all that, and go and fill up your tank, I said, to myself, first of all, how many tanks can you fill? You don't feel like you go still spend and you go still buy the first. So it didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. I, will, I couldn't have been bothered, right? But you see, the next thing my sister says to me, message, well, you need to leave this country. So when Dangote is coming and saying that jackpot thing, right, it's beyond just, um, um, it's beyond just the job for people now. Because some people are actually having decent income, right? They have... Their jobs can actually take care of them if we were in a sane uh, uh, climb. I know that some people that live abroad, if they know that, okay, their monthly income is X, Y, Z, right? They can still afford a very decent accommodation, decent, dis decent feeding and everything. They can plan on that budget to say, okay, you know what? With X amount of my salary, I can sort out my rents. 
I can sort out my feeding, I can sort out all the things and still have maybe some level of savings. There is no plan here, right? You just wake up. And this same APC government was the same government that really, really sponsored a lot of things during that Occupy Nigeria. I never believed in that protest. I never came out one day to say I was going to go and stand, you know, just to protest because it didn't make sense to me, right? That, because for me, I don't, for one, I don't believe that protest in Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria works, right? So, but you know how it was tough. That they had the then president had to receive uh, uh, his um, what's it called his decision. He had to go back, you know. Now you just come out and just announce something abruptly. Please, we have asked this thing several times. Where exactly is the plan? Because are we going to continue like this? Farmers yesterday, part of why I was upset. Farmers yesterday, you allocated 19 billion naira to them. Farmers that were suffering from um, for, uh, losses based on floods and all of those things. Instead of you to 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 major in the um, in major in the major, you major in the minor. What has repairs of national assembly? You understand? Got to do with where we are in this situation. But you are allocated seventy billion naira to them. You are allocated thirty five billion to what's it called? To to judicial council. Where we all know that what exactly is that thirty five billion supposed to do? You know where you are supposed to invest and let us see how we can take ourselves out of this problem. Where there is manufacturing, we, we start to produce a lot of things so that the cost of um, um, goods and food and all of that will drop at least. You're not doing that. And every day it is continuous hike. If it is not the dollar that is slapping you, it is the, it is the fuel. Yesterday we, we took a story of the Electricity uh, Regulatory Council saying that they have to put a peg. They have to come and explain what is making it because electricity is also trying to go, go up. Yeah. And I've said this thing several times. I bought fuel in the... I can't remember how much I bought fuel in the US. Whether 190 or something. I can't remember how much now. Let, let me not remember the, 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 the amount. But I know, I know that by the time I calculated the money, it was quite high. You know, if you, if you converted that money to Naira. Mm -hmm. But you see, in the US, eh, I drove for 14 hours. There was no pothole. So even if I'm spending high money to buy petrol, I'm not going to spend money fixing my car. One of my car now has been, has been uh, grounded. Why? Because of all these bad roads that we have. And the, 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 the part, I need to fix it. So even if you say that you want to increase the price of fuel, what other things are we enjoying as Nigerians? What benefits? So it's not enough for you to say, give the youth opportunity and let us um, try as much as possible to, to get them to stay in Nigeria. Even if they stayed, the, the, your livelihood here, your, your cost of living, your, your yeah. life expectancy, you understand? Everything is, is being choked right now. So if you really are a serious government and you really care about your people, you really must show us that this thing is beyond politics or games anymore. Because what do you want people to do? Very soon people will go on the street and start to attack innocent people. Because that's, that's where it's getting to. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. You can also tweet at us at Wish Your Africa World. With a wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you can't, if you can't, <laughs> if you can't cry, you might as well laugh because <laughs> our phone line is now open. The number to call is zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. Please turn off the device that you're watching us from, so we don't get the feedback. Again, the number is zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anybody wants to say anything? <laughs> but I'm, no, I'm, I'm sure done. that, I mean, even just needing to vent. There's, is there mm. isn't really anything we're going to say today that we haven't said in countless episodes because it's just sense. I mean, the things that you're seeing... There is a, there's a point where I'm understanding in that I can say, okay... Like we said before, there was no money for the subsidy. So we understood that the subsidy had to go. Step one. Step two, very quickly followed by, here is how, with creativity and a measure of innovation, we are going... If you could take one hard decision, how about you take a few more that actually shows us that we are all in this together and there is a way forward. The way we're feeling right now has nothing to do with the present. 
if you think about it. It's not the cost of the dollar today or the cost of petrol it's today. It's the fact that there's no any side. Thank you. There's that no any really side. It so it is not the price because one thing about the resilience that we have is that we are just because people must eat, yeah. people must move around, life must continue. We adjust. What we don't want is a tipping point where people, necessity is the mother, mother of invention. I remember this old... Um, sorry, sorry, Uti, Uti, hold that thought. Mm -hmm. I think we have a caller from Worry. Are you there? Yeah. Sorry for keeping you. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I get it. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it's a slow matter. What is the happen for Nigeria? We got petrol matter in this one. Hmm. Huh? The, the way where they hide this petrol now, uh, since you don't get life, you don't be buying petrol to watch the record. Huh? Thank you. Hello? Thank you, Manuel. Peleo. Peleo, what they tell ourselves now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, that's the reality. The places where there is a fuel that is expensive, they don't have power issues. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, so <laughs> I mean, yeah. when you think about it, it's just uh, your when there's no end in sight, what's the next thing that's going to happen? If you remember this very old Denzel Washington movie, I think it's John, Johnny Q or John Q. When he got desperate enough, maybe he carried a gun and went into the hospital because mm -hmm. the insurance would not pay for his son's, I think it was a kidney replacement or something. That is the point we don't want to get to. Because, like you said, innocent people will get hurt. It is now, it becomes a dire situation. When people cannot eat, when people are in darkness, I mean, there's just too much. <laughs> and when you turn on the news, mm. when you open a newspaper, you are confronted by 70 billion, 35. So you, just like Jonathan, are we joking here? Mm -hmm. You say you cannot subsidy, you can't carry 70 billion, carry 35 billion, carry 500 billion. Like, do we hear ourselves? So, let me take Loma, sorry, Uti. Okay. Loma, you are live. Loma, are you there? Hello. Go ahead, you're live, quickly. Good, good evening. Good evening. I can't hear you people. It's like network issue. I can't hear you people. We can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Oh, sorry. We probably need to cut that call and let him try to call back. Go ahead um, and wrap up your thoughts. Let me come back to this. I have even wrapped it up. Ah, because okay. really and truly, there's <laughs> like like I said, there's not much, there, what else are we going to say? You said you, said you want to take off subsidy, B. You now go and take a, a loan of 800, uh, 800 million dollars. I mean, how much was it that they were applying for? You say you want to set aside 500 billion for palliative. Do you understand? Like, does it make sense that you're not giving judges 35 billion? You're giving House of Assembly 70, 70 billion. And you say you don't have money. At the end, it is us that is suffering it. If you're even going to take that loan, and here's the problem. If you're going to take the loan, you're going to pay interest on the loan. You are going to have to pay the loan back. Remember that the same way dollar is going to affect the cost of petrol is the same way that loan is going to get more expensive for us every, every single day. Yeah. Okay, God, we bless you. <laughs> Lama, you're live. <laughs> Good evening, my dear sister. Good evening, all. Uh, oh, oh, my dear sister, we, 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 are, we, so, we are just done in this part of the country. Let me use that English. In fact, I am one of the Nigerians who has never believed that there is anything like full subsidy removal. It is only increment of poor control that our president did and NNPC, and they now told us they remove poor control. Now, what is happen? What made it possible for them to increase it again? I'm just telling you, our leaders today have decided to stop us. Our leaders have decided to inflict pain. We are in pain here in February, but our hope is not on man. We are relying on God. One day, God will deliver us from this hard politician that doesn't want to say anything good in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You see, let me come to you. Hmm. I think it's going to get energy. Wow. Where do we start from? We, <laughs> we have lamented. This is not going, there is no end in sight. We have come through the, the, the sap. We've, in fact, it's, it's actually reminding me of what happened in the past when I was younger, like a little girl. And this was, my parents went through the same complaint. They complained about the government, they complained about the country. And again, if I recall, Uti said that the SAP was what, what, that was the trajectory that, you know, made them leave Nigeria. So we are getting to that place where everybody would leave. People are tired. People are psychologically gone. Psychologically, you know, um, what's the name? Um, uh, you see, psychologically, we are gone. <laughs> Let me take Dixie. Like, um, Sorry, the uh, the, you see, just give me yes. a minute. I'll come back to you. Dixie, I think, okay. from Ikeja. Okay. Go ahead, you're live. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, please, you're live. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Hmm. Yeah, it is really very, very heartbroken. Hmm. The, the pain we are passing through in this conflict is unbearable. And there is no country in the world that has citizens with operate or accommodate what is going on here. I am actually very confused. How can you wake up in the morning, you go to work, or the way coming back to pick up from Peter to 12, and you discover the files have changed? Mm. Mm. I think our politicians are very sensitive. And they don't have the Nigerian masses at heart. Mm. They've never had it. It is unfortunate that the judiciary is also compromised. Because if you never call for peaceful protest tomorrow, this politicians will go to the court and obtain the judgment for the protest to take place. And then we are left with no choice. Just to just to I don't know whether it's to whether for somebody to give up the ghost or what, I don't understand. It is very painful. That in a country where we have too much abundance of natural resources, that the Nigerian people become the capital poverty of the world. I mean, people should look around at what is actually going on. Jonathan, if he had removed the subsidy at that time, he wanted to remove it. This money they have borrowed from 2015 <laughs> to this. They wouldn't have borrowed it. And this money would have been invested into something else. How can this government give the parliamentarians 70 billion to do what? When teachers are not paid, policemen are not paid, potholes everywhere. There is no electricity. Good job. And they're giving judiciary 35 million to do what? I think Nigerians should stand up. Hmm. If we allow this to continue, we are going to buy a little of fuel at 1,000 1, naira. Go and mark my word. Look at the dollar today. The dollar is 820, uh, 813 naira as of this morning. Thank you, Dixon. <clears throat> Easy, do you want to wrap up your thoughts? <laughs> I think I have it. Yes. So my, my take is that we... Uh, Jennifer said something. She said that she cannot even think. And that's the same thing. Everybody is confused. It still boils down to the fact that psychologically everybody is, you know, they've zoomed out. And 
where how do we bounce back nigeria nigerians are actually happy people but you can't keep taking them for granted and keep giving them more hardship and thinking that everything will be okay and i recall somebody saying that if they if they take him out of office he would he nigeria will be thrown into a state of anarchy i I pray we don't degenerate to that level, even while he's still in office, because right. it's essential that we, as a people, maintain our sanity and keep keep our sanity for the sake of those around us. Because at the end of the day, the leaders don't really, really care. Okay. It's all about us looking out for ourselves as Nigerians. Let me come to you, Jennifer. With that, I, I, Thank you, Isi. Go ahead, Jennifer. I dropped my mic. <laughs> all right, so I have a couple of... Um, I have a comment here from Joe. Joe from Zaria. He says, ladies, the situation in the country today only shows the kind of greed creatures that we have, greedy creatures that we have as leaders. Instead of fixing our refineries first, they, re they rush to remove subsidy. As it is now on a daily basis, several people come around to beg for maize. This is Joe from Zaria. I have another comment from Raphael, also from Zaria, and he says, Nigeria, never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ah. ahead, Isi. Um, Uti. Um, oh, do I have comments? I, I was just going to say that I think, you know, I've never considered leaving this country, but hmm. with the way things are going, <laughs> you might I mean, just... You just want to. You I, might just hear that uh, Uwa <laughs> is, is hosting waste from somewhere in their abroad. You just, I'm you tired. just want to. <laughs> okay, so we have one here from Daniel Illo. He says, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of ways. Um, Nigeria today increments in fuel price. If we have offended this present government, they should please forgive us. I'm on my knees begging. Each passing day, you hear about problems in Nigeria, no solution. The government is just almost two months old, and things are like this. Only God knows what will happen when we get to six months to one year. Things are happening. Um, things, are hap things are happening like this, and you are telling me that people should not jaffa. I'm on the same boat with my dear, um, beautiful sister, Owa. I'm really sick and tired of this country. The increment of fuel is unnecessary and uncalled for, I must say. Sister Owa, sorry for your condition. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I have another one here from Ufoma. It says, hello, ways, ladies. The subject matter of price fuel today is two-pronged. As far as petrol price is concerned, the price will be unfavorable if we continue to import without a comparable alternative of local production and a growing productive economic activity base. Even if the local refineries purchase raw crude at international dollar equivalent prices, the other factors of production like transportation, wages, etc. will be less compared to petrol from Europe and as such relatively cheaper than the European petrol. We ought to enjoy some comparative advantage as we have the raw crude locally. Two, to arrest the free fall of the dollar, local supply must exceed demand of the dollar. The street forex traders should be banned, licenses revoked, and compelled to sell their forex to banks to improve supply, and banks should be the only source of forex as a regulated entity. But sadly, it seems the supply of forex in the hands of street traders is more than what is in the banking system. And that is possible because street traders are connected to those in power. Individuals can trade virtually, but mm. not touch it physically. Okay, your topic today, Nigeria today, increment in fuel price is very depressing to me. Nigeria, Nigeria leadership can afford to increase fuel prices without increasing the salaries of the people to meet the demand on the increase. Nigeria today is like a parasite feeding big on itself, but it is, but in this time on poor but in this time, on the poor masses who are bearing the brunt of their actions, sometimes I feel like asking God to send fire to, to end everything in this country. I am surprised to hear NMPC chairman saying that the fuel price is determined by the market price. Um, my question to him is, when did NMPC become an independent marketer and the regulatory body for the prices of fuel in Nigeria? Is NMPC not supposed to be on the side of the Nigerian people? I am deeply sad with the insensitivity and the in um, and insensitivity and insensibility of uh, Tinubu's administration this is from Santos Isi, I think you have a comment as well quickly yes it's this is from Joe he said um, good evening my beautiful sisters of ways Oga Joe from mainland I am sick 
typing this message. The present government is clueless. How can one just wake up and discover that there is fuel increase without any prior announcement? This is so sad and someone is telling me to be patient that price will come down without a working refinery. Another um, um, contribution from another contribution from Angola, and this is from Osinachi, and he or she says this fuel pump price is too much. You can say that again. Thank you. Thank you. Literally, we've run out of time. Well, thank you, ladies. Um, I really just hope that these people actually come up with creativity because this is actually very tiring. It's sickening to know that Nigeria, that, that we can boldly brag that we are one of the best minds across the world. We are the ones yes. having this problem and yet we're not able to find a very you know, creative solution to our problems. Instead, it's almost like every single day that we wake up, the thing is getting worse. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I just, I just hope that, you know... <sighs> I don't even know what to hope for. We'll see you guys. Uh, please follow us across all. Thank you, ladies. Across all social media handles at Ratio Africa, you can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. If you missed our quote for today, here it is again. This business is done with dollars. Remember that the rate of dollar now is in one window and not like we had several others where CBN will give around 400 naira while the black market will be around a region of 700 naira. But now there is no more second window. And this was from the Ikman uh, national president, Chinedu Koronko, justifying why this petrol price had to go up. Hmm. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.